we detailed earlier on tonight and uh, we scroll down there's a good picture here this is the young man uh, somebody came forward uh, his name is Jermaine Gagnon 28 years old young black male uh, struggles with drugs homosexual uh, he says that he uh, numerous times went to the private home of Ed Buck and if you don't know the name Ed Buck about 17 months ago, Ed Buck had a homosexual young man, African-American person of color, by the name of uh, Gannon, I believe it was, Gannon, die in his apartment of uh, drug overdose. Now, the coroner's report revealed that they found uh, things that might have been drugs, like white powder and crystal-type material, all over Ed Buck's apartment which is a ritzy condo in uh, L.A. They didn't arrest him for that, which baffles me. They ended up finding out there was not enough evidence to prove that Buck furnished this young black man with the drugs that ended his life. Now, this, uh, I, this is, I gotta back up about a year here because Alex Jones turned me on to this. The elites, the globalists, the top Democrats, they get their kicks from, and you know, Alex Jones gets really creepy with it and says they suck the energy out of black people. And I, I, I thought, like you're thinking, that sounds crazy. Alex Jones is a madman. He's nuts. But you know what? Um, this kid said the same exact thing. He uses the word energy. He said that's the kind of energy Ed feeds on. Uh, so let's just read a little bit about uh, Gagnon, Jermaine Gagnon here, uh, his story. By the way, part of his story is that he provided photographic evidence like this. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? That's Ed Buck in what Gannon calls long johns and a muscle shirt, which was the uniform that Buck would make him wear according to him, whenever he went to his apartment. Uh, there is a bunch of these images, actually. Should we maybe cycle through? No, it's, they get gross. This is supposed to be something people can watch with their family. Uh, look at that. So, there's photographic evidence. And by the way, does this guy not look like, uh, let's, let's back up here. There's some striking, they're the same guy. It, they look like they could have come out of the same womb. It's the same haircut, the same eyes, the same facial structure. Unbelievable. Un fucking believable. All right. All right. Let's uh let's just leave it there. Uh instead of ruining this poor kid's identity with his photos, let's ruin this schmucks. Because even if nothing illegal happened, which drug use is very illegal, I still think. Um there's more pictures. There's him with the kid. This is when uh, Buck was allegedly uh, administering drugs, uh, crystal meth, to the young man. Uh, there are apparently wind, uh, mirrors, like he, he has this mattress in the middle of his room, and then there's mirrors, so he can always, oh, I can't, it's disgusting. I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to talk about this. I read the story. So the lawyer, after all these accusations, just says he doesn't see any reason to comment on this unsubstantiated. Uh, let's see, he says, we see no reason to respond to the unverified accusations from individuals just trying to seek the attention. This looks substantiated to me. Um, like, I'm pretty sure that's drug paraphernalia. I'm not positive, but that looks to be a pipe that you use to smoke either methamphetamine or uh, crack. Uh, I mean, that's Ed Buck. That's the black kid making the accusation. Seems pretty substantiated to me. Uh, I just, I, it's bad. Okay, let's read the guy's story. Let's read the guy's story, shall we? He said, I have done, uh, I'm sorry. He said that he accepted $200 to spend the evening with Ed Buck at his department. This is where his story starts. He said, I'd done sex for money other times, but I don't make it a habit. The first day we met, I met him at his house. There is a gate at the main entrance and he buzzed me up. He's on the second floor. When I walked in, by the way, I don't think I can keep scrolling because uh, I'll get taken off Facebook for showing you some of these images. There's a 
continue. When I walked in, it was dim lights, a mattress on the middle of the floor, just like the image behind me, uh, three mirrors surrounding the mattress, and a flat screen TV mounted on the wall. So from these images, uh, the flat screen TV is presumably at the foot of the bed. Uh, you can actually, can I scroll? Can you see these mirrors? Uh, you can kind of, this is one of the mirrors, obviously. So he's taking a picture of one of the mirrors. Let's keep reading. Gagnon said the mirrors were about seven foot high and appeared to be suspended on ropes so that they tilted forward over the bed. He said it was just kind of weird. Anywhere you look in this room, you see yourself in the mirror. What mostly caught my attention was the windows. They were covered in fabric. You couldn't see out them and nobody could see in. He also had this red and black toolbox, Gagnon continues, with all these type of fetish stories like cock rings and other sex toys. He also has needles inside this drawer, and you can see if you pull up this article, I don't, I think this is the part that I better not show. There are uh, pocket pussies, there are dildos, there are, I mean, just everything you can imagine shoved inside what appears to be the box he was referring to. Now, could he have faked this one? Sure, just go to the sex store and buy a bunch of them, uh, get them all to look slightly used, ugh, and then, uh, and then take the picture. A little bit harder to fake pictures of Ed Buck. Maybe it's not him. Uh, Gagnon said he had a couple drinks and chatted with Buck. He continued, he knew my situation. We discussed my lifestyle and what I was going through, how long I'd been using crystal meth. Again, Gagnon was a drug addict. That is allegedly why, uh, why he says he was targeted by Buck. He said he was a good person when I first met him. He was really cool. He was calm. He was collected. The apartment looked like a club scene or something. We just sat at the table trying to get to know each other and the fetishes that he likes. He said this, he likes the bulge in your pants and he likes you to wear the you know what rings or the pocket and, and pocket you know what's. I guess I already said it, the cock rings on the pocket pussies. He's fixated on pictures and looking at you, Gagnon said. He continued, he says that two men having sex with each other is for, I, I can't say the words that he said, the F word and not fuck. Uh, he continued that Buck may do touching or looking, but he doesn't do penetration. However, he says that they shared oral sex. Uh, now here it gets, he, he talks about the uniform he made him wear, which was tidy righties a muscle shirt, and some long johns, white knee-high socks. Uh, he said that every day he would go over there, he would be given clothes. The 28-year-old says in their first meeting with Buck, they smoked crystal meth. Uh, he said this, there's pipes everywhere, baggy straws all throughout the apartment. Uh, now here's the thing. Gagnon said that Buck was open about the fact that he was having dates with multiple men, young, black, handsome, and well endowed. He said he was quite open about being very generous to the black community. He continued, I'm his type and pretty much half the black community is his type. Vulnerable, depressed. If you're in a depressive state, that's the energy that feeds him. Let me repeat, if you're in a depressive state as a young black gay male, that is the energy that feeds Ed Buck, according to this alleged victim. Holy balls. Alex Jones was right again. Uh, Gagnon says he stayed for four or five hours in that first visit. Uh, he said he went back on the second time. <sighs> Fuck. Uh, that was the first time that Buck injected the crystal meth into him. Um, he said, he always told me in my house, I'm the only person that can administrate. He was the only person who could give drugs to anybody, which that is an important tidbit. And it could have just been the Gagnon said this because he wants to get him in trouble because we all know from the, uh, both the young man who just died allegedly of a drug overdose and, or not young man. There's more to that story too. I'm going to get to it. He was allegedly in his fifties, which the timing makes sense. I'll just put it that way. Uh, but the first individual, it, there was not enough evidence to prove that Buck gave him the drugs or inserted the drugs or injected the drugs. All we knew was that he was high at Buck's house and that could have happened before he got there. He could have done it in the bathroom. You don't know, so you can't get a conviction, so you're not going to arrest him. However, this guy says that at Buck's house, the only guy who was allowed to give anyone drugs was Buck and you didn't bring your own supply into the household. Uh, Gagnon said that Buck injected the crystal meth into a vein on his arm and he reacted badly to the drugs and became aggressive. He said he got so high that he was enraged, he cussed him out and made a big scene at his apartment and he pretty much put him out. He paid him the $250 and he left. 
continuing, the two men stayed in touch months later, around September 22nd, Buck offered to fly him out again. Over the summer, Gagnon had learned about the death of Gamel Moore, the individual who died of the drug overdose in 2017. Uh, that investigation again was closed, and they said they found insufficient evidence. So Gagnon said that he called Buck and asked him straight up, did you kill the boy? He, he said that Gagnon was nonchalant, uh, changed the subject, and could not or would not answer any questions about Gamel Moore. By the way, the Moore family put out various excerpts from uh, Gamel's journal in which Gamel said that Buck got him hooked on crystal meth and that he was evil. Could be fake. Who knows? So let's, let's keep going, shall we? Um, I'm sorry, I skipped a part here. Uh, he added, the third time I met Buck, I was stupid and dumb and wanted to go back for more. I wanted to get him to admit that he actually had something to do with Gamel's death. So he said he went back for more and fell back into his shit. Uh, I can't scroll down anymore. We'll hit some NSFW stuff. More so than this, my lord. Uh, so he said he went back and he went for the money. He needed a place to sleep. He needed food. That's, you know, drug addict's brain thinking. He said Buck wasn't himself. He was too jittery, like he had a task to do but was procrastinating. He was determined to finish something, but I don't know what he was determined to do. The 28-year-old said Buck offered him a drink of Gatorade. Uh, by the way, is that racist? Uh, that seems like possibly the most racist part of all of this. Uh, when he drank it, Gagnon said he began to feel as if he'd been drugs and suspect the drink contained GHB or some other date rape drug. Uh, he said we did the usual. I changed into his clothes, drank most of the Gatorade. Within minutes, I felt woozy. I didn't feel like my normal self. He said that as he's basically getting roofied, uh, that is when Buck, and this is all alleged, this is what the guy says happened. That Buck then said, you're not high enough for me. I want you to do another point. The guy is looped out, zonked out, can't say no. Buck comes over, gives him more drugs. And at this point, Gagman says, I really thought I was the next person that was going to be dead at Ed Buck's house. Uh, he said that he took his phone. Uh, Gagman later said he found the phone called his mom, which is, is presumably there is a cell phone record that can prove he's telling the truth about this. So he said he went and drunk out of the faucet. He found his home phone and called his mother. He said, Mom, I feel like he's going to kill me. I think I'm going to die. Now, of course, the, the call itself cannot be tracked unless the NSA is lying to us, but we do, I mean, we ought to be able to subpoena that and find out if he really placed a phone call from Ed Buck's apartment on a date on or around the one he says this would have occurred on. Uh, so he says he lay praying and un basically just high and zonked out and unable to move for two hours while Buck walked around the apartment seemingly unconcerned. Uh, when he came down from the high, Gagnon said he wanted to go out for a walk. Gagnon gave him $60, told him to go out and get a drink. Instead, Gagnon went to a corner store and he says he bought a taser and two knives to protect himself. Again, this seems like it should be easily verifiable. That should be even more verifiable than the phone call. So if this kid is lying, 28 year old kid if it's just a former drug addict or a current drug addict trying to get some money some hush money from Gagnon if that's what's happening he shouldn't be giving these details because this is all easily checkable and if the police take this seriously and I'm sure with the media spectacle they will it's a simple check and if this kid's lying it's going to come out uh, Gardner said somebody had been following him. He recognized the man from his previous visits as Ed Buck's neighbor. Uh, this guy had allegedly been following him around, seeing where he was going once he left Buck's apartment. He said once he went back to Buck's apartment, you know, with a taser and a knife that allegedly this guy just saw and then reported back to Buck. Uh, Buck didn't want anything else to do with him anymore, told him to get out of the apartment, uh, paid him to go away. This is the concluding, or part of the conclusion here. Uh, Gagnon said this, It just amazes me when at the same time he degrades gay black men who live with HIV and makes them go through more pain and struggle. I don't understand the human mind that can do that. And you know what? The, the long and the short of this is I think Alex Jones is right. I think these people literally, not figuratively, feed like psychological goblins off the suffering they inflict on others. And it's just disgusting. I mean, about the worst thing you can imagine. 
Ugh. 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 And again. So now Buck is back under investigation. I hope something comes from it, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs>